French President François Hollande is wrapping up a tour of the Middle East today that took him to Lebanon, Egypt and Jordan. In addition to business deals signed in Cairo, the president is, has been discussing regional politics, the institutional paralysis in Lebanon, the refugee crisis stemming from Syria and, of course, the threat posed by the Islamic State group. But what's the point? Does France still wield, does France still wield any influence in the region? If so, what leverage does François Hollande really have? My guest this evening, Julien Théron, who's joined us on set. You're a political analyst and advisor, a Middle East specialist, and a professor at the University of Versailles. Thanks for being with us. Hi. Hisham Jabber joins us from Beirut. You are the head of the Middle East Center for Political Affairs. Hisham, the first question goes to you. In a nutshell, what do these regional leaders think when they see François Hollande coming to town? Do they think here is a major power broker, or do they think here's a tourist? No, I mean, François Hollande was welcome in Lebanon. Uh, you know, the relationship between Lebanon with France is historical. But uh, to be frank and honest, uh, France doesn't have the same influence, political influence in Lebanon as before. Uh, of course, France, uh, uh, in this visit, uh, first of all, it's uh, one, Lebanon was one station of three uh, you know, but it was the first station before Cairo and Jordan. Uh, Lebanon was always the French gate uh, to the Arab world. And uh, also what is concrete, yeah, beside the protocol meeting and dinner and meeting with, the, with all factions, what is concrete in this visit was the uh, 100 million euro promised by Francois Hollande to be given to uh, Lebanon for the Syrian refugees. Second, the support, the political and military support to the Lebanese army. It's very important. Uh, this is, you know, concerning Lebanon. And something before to go to Egypt and to Jordan, there is something significant in this visit was a photo taken to Francois Hollande with the religious leaders in Lebanon at the same place. Uh, uh, after 96 years, you know, in 1920, General Goro uh, had a photo with a Lebanese religious leader at the same place, Palais de Pain, uh, you know, and that's remind Lebanese uh, at that time. Also, this is significant in some respect. Second, uh, Francois Hollande, of course, he went to Cairo. I think Cairo but was. Hisham, just let me interrupt station. you for a moment. My question is really because you're, you're talking about the deep relations between France and, and Lebanon, and you're talking about the support they've given to the uh, uh, Lebanese army. My question is concretely is Francois Hollande still a power, is France still a power broker in the region? Because if you take the example of the Lebanese army, for instance, France is not the one that has been putting the money on the table. France had got Saudi Arabia to put money on the table to buy weapons for the Lebanese army, and then Saudi Arabia withdrew uh, the money. So that just shows the limits of French power, does it not? Yes, in some respect. But let me tell you something. France is a great nation. It's not related to Saudi Arabia. If the Saudi uh, grant was uh, frozen, I think France has other means to help Lebanese army. I was such, military such as attaché what? in such France, as what, Hisham and I know that France always helped Lebanon. It can help Lebanon directly, you know, by many means, training, uh, spare parts, uh, even weapons, uh, long-term loans, etc., etc. With France doesn't have to wait for the Saudis uh, to uh, uh, to liberate their uh, All right. uh, their grant. All right, let's get Julien Théron to join this conversation. Is France a power broker in the region? Does I mean, how much concretely, how much leverage does France have? Well, it's definitely implied in the region. It's actually very active in the region everywhere. We know that we have a, a very good ties with uh, Saudi Arabia. We signed 10 billions of euros of contracts pretty well last year uh, with uh, Kuwait as well. So you might think that we are very involved in sunny uh, areas, including Egypt, for instance. And we are. But we also invited Hassan Rouhani in Paris. So we define ourselves, and President Holland just said it in Lebanon, he said that uh, we are kind of objective and neutral in the game that is played in the region between the Sunni power, meaning like more or less the Gulf Cooperation Council, GCC, and Iran in the other side. And you agree Lebanon. with this idea that France is a neutral power in this region? 
Yes and no. We play both sides, mainly on uh, economic diplomacy and especially with military uh, economic diplomacy. But in so the same time, we arms try contracts. To be, yeah, arms contract. So mainly with Sunni uh, powers, Saudi Arabia, uh, Egypt. That's very important. Uh, with Iran, it's more classical economic diplomacy that we play. But it's also it's kind of a door to enter the country and to have some role to play later. But we know that all no, the. I don't think that Syria or countries who support the Syrian regime would agree with you that France is a, a neutral power in the, in the region. Regarding to the Sunni-Shia antagonism, which is played by Saudi Arabia and Iran, but you're right, actually, regarding to Syria and the, the impact of the crisis in Lebanon, for instance, we are not uh, neutral at all. We, we took one side, which is saying, like, the side of, diplo uh, of democracy. This is the side we play, meaning that uh, we do not back uh, Assad's presidency and we do not back, of course, uh, Islamic terrorism. So we took this line and we still have have it. The question is interesting to know if we have the means actually to uh, influence what is happening there. We tried to, but it's true that in 2013, when the US actually retracted of their red line and that the UK in the House of Commons decided not to, to punish, if we can say so, uh, the use of chemical weapons, it appeared that Paris was a bit alone in this strategy and, and that and we might not have the power anymore that we France had. France was like. powerless to change anything. Yes, but it's, it's a long run and France is re it's coming back through economic diplomacy. You're right. In Lebanon, we said that we are backing the army and we back also, for instance, the Kurds in Iraqi uh, Kurdistan uh, with military advisors and weapons and so on. So, so we have an impact over there through economics, so military aid, through uh, military direct action against ISIS. But it's true that we do not have the political influence, direct influence that we had uh, before, uh, like in the, in the times of the mandates on the Middle East. But it's the new Middle East, so we have to adapt it. Hisham Jabber in Beirut, do you feel there is a case of double standards uh, in the French foreign policy? Uh, if you look at, for instance, the, the foreign policy of France vis-a-vis -vis Syria has been to back the side of democracy and therefore take a very strong opposition uh, to uh, Bashar al-Assad. If you look at what was happening only yesterday in Egypt, for instance, France wants to develop a special relationship with the autocratic regime of Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, and democracy doesn't seem to be quite as much of a priority there. Is, is it a case of double standards? No, no, no. I, I, I would not interfere in the, in the French uh, foreign policy. France uh, is a great nation. They know exactly what they do. They have good relation with Egypt. Egypt uh, is uh, present a large market, uh, especially for the French weapons. Egypt, Egypt is fighting the terrorism, is not supporting terrorism. Uh, of course, uh, uh, some observers, they blame France to make double uh, policy. In, in one hand, they uh, pretend or they want, I mean, France uh, to fight terrorism. On the other hand, they have uh, a relation and they provide weapons to countries who support terrorists. And everybody knows this. Uh, or support the extremistic. This is one uh, one uh, important, you know, paragraph or point has to be discussed. On the other uh, hand, uh, and uh, I hear your uh, your guest, France, of course, lost a lot of influence in Lebanon. But Lebanon still, you know, related to France in many respects. Lebanon is the only francophone Arab country in the Middle East. Of course, beside uh, North Africa, Algeria, and Tunisia, and uh, and Morocco, uh, but. France, he came, a uh, president of France came to Lebanon to push the Lebanese to elect a new president, but I don't think uh, he does have or he did have in his hands any uh, concrete or uh, real uh, uh, initiative. So it, he did not make any dramatic change in the Lebanese uh, political uh, scene. You say there's a strong connection between Lebanon, with many Lebanese citizens speaking French, and, and France to this day. Did Lebanese citizens expect France to make any kind of difference in their politics? Yes, but uh, they are uh, disappointed in some respect that 
uh, but uh, still this uh, relation and this feeling is historical. You know, all Lebanese, not the only the Christian or the Maronite the Lebanese, believe me, I know that most of the Lebanese are attached to France and they even the francophone uh, has been uh, decreased, you know, in some respect, but francophonie, but at the same time, I believe that 70% of the Lebanese, they look to France and they have a lot of hope in France, even if France doesn't have a lot to give the Lebanese people, uh, like America has influence in uh, you know, more influence. And let me be frank, I, I believe that France had the first influence in Lebanon in the early 40s and 50s and started to lose its influence for the American, uh, given for the American, you know, share uh, the, from the 70s. But France still have a presence in Lebanon. So France you're saying that for the last 40, you're saying that for the last 45 years, France has been taking a back seat to the U.S. in the region, correct? Of course, of course. This, yes, that's correct. Uh, Julien Terron, uh, about this, uh, this argument of double standards in the French foreign policy, what's your assessment? Well, first I'd say that I agree uh, with uh, what was just said, uh, the fact that after 56, uh, the US and USSR explained that France and, and the United Kingdom would not have the same influence in the region. So it decreased a bit, but we are entering again, uh, especially because the sunny area, uh, especially the GCC, actually have troubles now with the US because Washington had played Iran and uh, passively regarding to Syria to please the Iranian deal and so on. So France is trying to come back in the Sunni area, especially in Saudi Arabia and other GCC countries. Regarding to double standard, of course, we can question, and some uh, human rights standards are questioned regarding to some regimes in the region that we actually back. So the French diplomacy says, yes, but we are strategic partners, partners and we have to work on that, and it's a good mean as well to cooperate, to tell them our point of view. So it is said that uh, in Saudi Arabia or Egypt, human rights are... are talked that we speak about that to the uh, local leaders. Of course, it's, the it's not the main topic that we discuss about, which is actually economic diplomacy. How do you wield influence if you do not have significant military power? We have, Is it possible? Uh, we have a military power, we have a significant military, military power, but we don't have the military power that might uh, uh, give us the opportunity to actually have a major political impact in the region. There was a huge debate whether France could or could not attack the regime in 2013 and the so on. The Syrian regime, and we saw they yes. didn't. When, once they found themselves we did alone, not. We did not, Paris but France not is engaged in a lot of different theatres. It was in Mali, in Central Africa, so, so it's... it's it's very important. But isn't that a yeah. sort of sign of the level of French military power, which is um, the French army is capable enough to intervene in northern Mali. It is strong enough to intervene uh, in the Central African Republic. But isn't the Middle East basically too much for the French army. It depends what we uh, hear about uh, military intervention. It might actually be. We have seen that Israel, uh, and they said that a few days ago, that they struck actually uh, some uh, some uh, Hezbollah uh, uh, weapons uh, uh, trucks uh, several times. So it means that the Western uh, technical possibilities regarding two small elements of military operation <coughs> is possible. So we are doing it. Targeted raids against in Iraq ISIS. and Syria and surveillance, air surveillance. That's what France is doing in, in Iraq. Yes, Syria. we can do some uh, intervention. But yes, we don't have the capabilities like the US when they uh, invaded Iraq, for instance. We don't have these kind of capabilities anymore. And our forces are already uh, doing a lot in a lot of different theaters. So, yes, we don't have the military means to intervene fully against a country or a terrorist entity in, in Middle East, that's for sure. Hisham Jaba, you're in Beirut and you're speaking, therefore, from a, a country where people know full well that political influence is directly linked to how much force you have. Uh, is that something you think is undermining uh, French influence and potential for influence in the region? 
not uh, how much force you have, how much influence you have in the political scene. Uh, let me But aren't also, the two linked? Uh, when you're looking at the power of a nation uh, when it comes to regional politics, aren't the two linked? If you looked at, for instance, at the power brokers in the Syrian crisis, it's people who have been willing to put boots on the ground or to somehow use military force. I'm thinking of Russia, I'm thinking of Iran, I'm thinking of Hezbollah. Those are people who have brought military power to bear on the Syrian crisis. France has been on the sidelines carrying out just a few air raids. Hence, my question, can they wield influence if they do not have a significant military presence? Yes, I think it's not a matter of military presence. I think France uh, had a chance to play a very positive role uh, uh, toward the Syrian crisis. You know, not, uh, I think they, uh, they were long for five, four years. And now America and uh, and uh, Russia, uh, both they made an agreement, and the France found itself like other countries, and uh, you know aside. Uh, Sorry, when you say France was wrong decision. for four years, what do you mean? Yes, I think uh, France had uh, had a chance to play a role as mediator, you know, uh, toward the Syrian crisis. But France believed, like others, that the regime in Syria will collapse, like they said in a few weeks, in a few months, uh, talking about uh, uh, 2012. And we are among the people who said this regime will not collapse in, uh, in weeks nor uh, within years. I think it, they were wrong in some respect. France has influence in France and could play a role in the middle and mediator and uh, uh, and accepted uh, by uh, by uh, by uh, everyone. Anyway, let me remember something. It's not the size of military. Your uh, guest said was talking about 1956. Yes, he is right. I remember, and as historian, uh, that when. President Eisenhower said to the French and to the British, get out of Egypt. He did not say only China, the canal of Suez. He said, did get out of the whole region. And America came, uh, uh, you know, taking the place of the British and trying to take the place of France also in the region. But later, no, all Lebanese remember the position of General de Gaulle in 68 when the airport of Beirut was invaded by the Israelis and they destroyed aircraft there. General de Gaulle had a very strong position facing Israel. You know, France was always France and all will stay always France. It's not a matter of size or uh, military uh, power. Uh, it's a matter of uh, wise uh, policy could be taken, especially in the region where France has a lot had. Used but to have Hisham lot of Jabba, you're telling us about, you're telling us about 1956 it. and Charles de Gaulle, you know, a, a person and a man who are... 68, I, 68. You're telling us about the 60s and about Charles de Gaulle, uh, something which is long past. I mean, does that bear any relevance to today's situation? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. The, 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 the influence of France was decreasing since then. But the France uh, did not lose, you know, everything. They still have a lot of credits, still have a lot of influence. France can, I think, uh, uh, also uh, take back some of that influence. France has institutions and in Lebanon uh, has, uh, has uh, as we said, the Francophonie. It's a matter of education, also has a presence. Also, the Lebanese army, let me tell you something. I was military attaché in 1992, uh, 93, 94 in Paris. And I remember we had embargo you know, toward the Lebanese army. And I said at that time to uh, Minister of Defense, Pierre Jacques, the Lebanese army is 70 percent Franco Fon, Francaise, a francophile, and uh, and with this embargo, we have to look to other sources uh, to buy weapons. And I remember at that time the embargo was taken off uh, at the time of President uh, Mitterrand. And uh, I think France can change, you know, take wise policy and take back some uh, lost or uh, losing uh, position. You know, um, it's, right. I think 
I think it's, it's possible uh, to France uh, to a change in some respects its policy and to come back to the Middle East and to take Lebanon as a, a departure, uh, departure station, as we said, and was Lebanon always the gate of France to the Arabs. And we think, uh, we have to thank Mr. Right. Hollande that he chose Lebanon uh, as the first station before he went to Egypt and to, to Jordan. And he found that... Uh, hold on, the uh, Hisham Jabra, let me uh, just interrupt happy. you for a second, and let me get uh, Julien Theron's opinion on this. Do you think that France can reclaim its position as a more important um, power broker in the Middle East, a position that it held decades ago? I think so. I think that we still have the networks uh, and uh, meaning a potential influence in the region. What actually happened since a couple of years is that we are a little bit retracting from central Middle East. Iraq, of course, since the end of Saddam Hussein, we have less influence over there. In Syria, the latest talks regarding to, the, uh, to solving the international uh, situation has brought France a little bit. So that might be a, a parallel with 56, because you, the US and Russia took the lead and said to the Brits, uh, Turkey and the French government that they were not the power broker in the region anymore. So that might be a parallel. And since a couple of years, yes, France is a little bit looking what is happening, participating, invited, but not but that... On the sidelines somewhat. A little bit on the sideline, not as a major actor than in the beginning of the Syrian revolution. Regarding to Lebanon, it's, it's very sensitive of the, the situation is pretty unstable mm -hmm. regarding to uh, the vacation of the presidency, regarding to uh, the government, regarding to the fact that the MPs always uh, postpone their mandate without election, regarding to uh, the, uh, the garbage crisis. So France chose not to take N too not much to wade aside, into domestic Lebanese politics. Especially between two presidential candidates, even though François Hollande met one of them, uh, because one of them is uh, actually backed by Hezbollah, and we know that there's a kind of pact of non-aggression be between France and Hezbollah in Lebanon, uh, even though Hezbollah is backing Bashar al-Assad, so indirectly we are enemies, actually. But regarding to Lebanon, we play like a complete neutrality regarding to the uh, presidential crisis. What about the idea of a soft power in the region for France? Um, Hisham Jabber was saying a lot of uh, Lebanese are French speakers and they think of France fondly and they remember that there used to be even closer ties than there are now. Is, is soft power something that France can wield, can use as leverage in the region, not just in Lebanon, but uh, beyond Lebanese borders across the region? I think that we can still play on that, of course, and I think that even the economic diplomacy or the military agreements and so on can bright, bring us back, actually, to the Middle East, even though uh, there will be two major uh, issues that we'll talk about pretty soon. The first one is the possible independence of Kurdistan regarding to the Kurdistan regional government, meaning northern Iraq, that might actually organise a referendum for its independence. So France, as a, as a mediator, like you guess, Said, might actually bring back the idea of international law and how France might respect the uh, possibility to determine itself for the Kurdish people. That might be important. There's a lot of Kurds in, in France, for instance. And the other one that we kind of forgot is the fact that France said, like, beware, if there's no uh, two-state solution regarding to Palestine-Israeli uh, negotiation, France might actually recognize a, a Palestinian state. So it's too... Uh, pretty discreet uh, topics that we'll talk about again, and France might have actually the occasion to come back in, in very pragmatic ideas. Yeah. And France has been pushing for a resolution of the uh, Israeli-Palestinian conflict so far. Uh, that has not gained much momentum, but the story's not over on that yet. The verdict is not out on that uh, particular drive to resolve that conflict, so we'll see how that pans out. Uh, Julien Théron, thank you very much for joining us. Hisham Jaber speaking to us uh, from Beirut. Thanks a lot. I'd like to thank both our guests this evening. Thank you for watching us on the France 24 debate. We take a very short break. Thank you.